Okay, um, so my name is Andre Yun. Uh, I'm a data scientist at um, SK Telecom. So today I'm going to talk about the um, semi-supervised learning with uh, deep generative models for asset failure predictions. Here's our motivation. So you see that there's greater opportunity for data-driven prognostics with increasingly more sensor data available. available. And uh, deep learning has been successful with its capability to capture non-linearity in an immersive data. <coughs> Over the past few years, you see uh, several interesting deep learning applications in our field as well. And asset failure prediction is, is an important uh, industrial application that can be done by estimating uh, RUL, given historical data with corresponding health information. I think one of the uh, biggest challenges in, in, in the application side um, is the uh, lack of failure data. So as Dr. Large mentioned that, uh, pointed out that uh, we don't have many uh, failure data. So in reality, failures are rare in many cases, especially those that are mission critical assets. And obtaining exact health inf status information is very expensive. So the question is, what can we do when there is an insuffic insufficient level of failures uh, in historical data? Um, this, this can be, um, viewed as a problem of insufficient label. Um, this problem has long been recognized in machine learning, and people uh, have developed uh, semi-supervised learning techniques to improve uh, generalization on supervised learning using unlabeled data. And so the uh, supervised learning relies on the label data uh, to uh, estimate a function that relates input and the output value, which is called the label. And the only, uh, unsupervised learning relies on unlabeled data to characterize the prob uh, probability distribution of the input data. And as you can see here, semi-supervised learning um, try, uh, uses, uh, relies on both labeled and unlabeled data. And it is um, used when the size of the unlabeled data is uh, much larger than the labeled data, as you can see here. So um, in, in MNIST analogy, um, so people in machine learning community uh, have developed several different techniques to do uh, semi-supervised learning, uh, and they've achieved uh, almost 1% error using only uh, 100 MNIST sample labeled. So they, they have uh, these 60,000 MNIST samples, and they blindly use the rest of the sample, and they, they only use the 100 MNIST sample label to do the, um, to the uh, hand, re hand, hand digit recognition problem to solve it. And they, they achieve um, almost 1% error rate, which is good. So the question, the second question is, can we do asset failure prediction with only few failure records? That is our, our, our key question that we would like to um, address today. So here's our, an overview of our approach. So basically what we are trying to do is to do the nonlinear embedding um, that is obtained from a deep generative model, uh, one of the deep generative model, models, and we use that uh, nonlinear embedding before we build our uh, reliability, mo reliability model that can associate the input sensor variable with the, um, the future reliability of a given asset at a given time. And so, yeah, so basically, um, so here, just to illustrate that the main components of our approach are um, variational autoencoder, which is one of the deep generative models, and the uh, sequential modeling, which is done by a higher order RNN, such as GRU and LSTM. So, um, so what we first do is to do unsupervised learning uh, using variational autoencoder, as I mentioned. This is the basic architecture and essentially the same as in the original VAE paper, except for the two things that I'm going to explain. Um, so basically, we use RNN instead of uh, feed for network to, do the, uh, to estimate those parameters in, in the variational autoencoder. So all the nodes here in, in, in the architectures are all, uh, that what it means is all the nodes here are uh, rec uh, recurrent, except for these two uh, nodes here that uh, estimate the, param uh, the parameters that are used to uh, do the reparameterization tricks. So in the training, we um, use this following loss function, which is known as a variational lower bound. 
and we made uh, we introduced uh, um, uh, parameter alpha here uh, to uh, weight this. Um, uh, so let me let me try to explain this again. So we introduced this alpha, which is given as one of the one of the window size of the um, recurrent neural network. Uh, this was needed to um, to take the uh, recurrency into account. Otherwise, we would incorrectly uh, weight these two uh, losses in, in the loss functions. And this, this is unsupervised learning, and we use both uh, labeled and un unlabeled data. In the second step, we take the part of the uh, encoder, so this part here, to embed the low data. So we embed the low data um, using this F embedded obtained from the trained uh, variation autoencoder, and then we uh, so and, and then we took the only the layer up until here because the last layer in the encoder is a sampling layer, uh, which basically is a sample uh, with the Gaussian distribution, and and uh, M1 model. Some of you may know um, by uh, Google DeepMind, uh, they use this the sampling layer too to embed their uh, uh, digits, but we, we avoid it because we want to do um, we, we want to avoid it. It's a sampling uh, in the procedure. So here we uh, embed the low data in the label sample uh, using this uh, embedding. And finally, uh, after we embedding, we use this embedded sensor value to do the uh, to build the reliability model. So the reliability model is nothing but um, a second order RNN. We use both GRU and LSTM. And um, actually, we found that there's a, not much difference between these two. So we, the final result, we use the GRU for, for the sake of simplicity. And uh, we, uh, for the architectural choice, we use the window size of 50 cycles. Um, so here's our experimental evaluations. We use this famous NASA's CMAP Turbo Engine data set. Uh, we use FD001. And as uh, many of you know that the um, objective of this is to predict the RUL of 10, uh, 100 engines, uh, units, here I call, from the run to failure data from another set of 100 engines. So we train on this 100 set, uh, uh, a set of 100 units and make a prediction on another set of 100 units. And here we compare the performance of our RUL predictions with the following method. So our baseline method is is pure supervised training with high order RNN. And the second method is, is, a, is a simplest um, semi-supervised learning method, which is called self-learning. Self what it does is basically do the supervised training using label data only, and then propagate the label based on this weak learner. And then use this soft label, which is generated, uh, to train this model once again. And the last one is our, uh, our proposed method. So our focus here is on the performance with decrease, decreasing fraction of label sample. So we have 100 units uh, of run to failure data. And instead of assuming that all the um, units are failed, we assume that only a fraction of them are known to be failed. So we have a fractional information of the failures. So this is the result of, uh, uh, this is baseline result. And from here, uh, what's plotted here is x-axis is the uh, true RUL of a, um, of a given unit, and the y-axis is, is the estimated RUL. And the blue and red dotted line indicate plus, minus 30 and 50 cycles respectively to give you guidance. So you can see that if we use the uh, entire uh, training sample with a failure record, we, uh, the prediction never offs uh, above 30 cycles, as you can see within this envelope. But as we omit the uh, failure record, um, you can see a 50%, uh, 80%, 50%, 30%, 20%, and down to 1%, you see the uh, performance uh, degradate uh, prominently, as, as you can see from this evolution. And we also have uh, some failure case here. Uh, to quantify this result, we repre repeated this process many times and measure, um, measure MAE and MSE, uh, R-square and score metric, the score metric which is given in the uh, CMAP paper. 
Um, except for the R square, uh, the lower value means better. And what's plotted here, y axis is the MA re respective metrics, MAE, MSC, scores, and R square, as a function of the fraction in the range of 0 to 30 percent where the uh, degradation is most, most prominently shown. And you can see that um, as we decrease the number of this failure fraction, uh, the performance gets worse and worse. And, and note that this is the uh, score metric plotted in log scale. So you can almost see that the um, prediction power uh, lower, uh, gets lower um, exp almost exponentially. Now, when we do the self-learning, you see that there is almost no difference. Uh, within statistical uncertainty, there is a very good uh, consistency, meaning that the self-learning doesn't give you uh, any uh, advantage. Now, when we use this um, nonlinear embedding techniques, you can see that um, this degradation, the level of degradation, it's much smaller. Uh, so almost at this scale, you can, uh, you can see uh, the difference within statistical uncertainty down to 5%. Oh. So this is our uh, numerical, numerical compilation of the result. Um, so this is MAE, MSC, score, and R square, and three different methods, uh, supervised learning, uh, semi-supervised learning, and our proposed method. And we, uh, we compi compile the number for 1%, 5%, 10%, 20%, 20%, up to 100%. So you can see that this 100% number, um, by the way, this score, uh, 345, which is already very comparable to the result uh, that um, other people have shown and, and, and in some of the literatures. And you can see that um, there is, if, if you look at the 1%, which means out of 100 units, we know only one failure, uh, uh, we know there's only one failure, and already with the uh, 1%, we, we've achieved pretty good uh, prediction power, as you, by, by, as you can see by comparing these two numbers. And if you compare this uh, supervised learning and the semi-supervised learning, there's a, a factor of 1.7 and factor of 2.4 and factor of 3.6 improvement respectively for uh, MAE and MSC and the, and the score. And the prediction accuracy is kept rather high, even down to 5% fractions. So to conclude, uh, we propose a method based on semi-supervised learning using VAE embedded RNM model for the asset failure prediction with relatively small failure record. The experimental evaluation show that the proposed method can significantly improve the prediction accuracy. For example, a factor of 3.6 for the score metric at 1%. And our study suggests the semi-supervised learning approach with nonlinear embedding based on a deep generative model is effective in future reliability prediction in sparsely labeled data. And now we are checking with other sets in CMAPS data. There are uh, three, other, three more data set in, 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 the, in the entire uh, data set. So we are checking it and trying to extend this approach to see if we can incorporate the, um, another deep generative model, uh, um, generative adversarial network. Thank you.